Okay, I've wrapped the bed in Kapton tape, or rather polyamide tape, um, because what I have is Koptan tape. <laughs> I got it on eBay, and the link to the exact thing I bought is on um, my build of materials. However, there was a mix up with the order, and they did not have enough of the 20 millimeter tape to fulfill my order so they sent me a 30 millimeter piece which I'm glad they sent me because uh, you actually probably want a wider tape for this uh, because you have to fill so much area anyway I just wrapped front and back but before I could wrap it I uh, had to troubleshoot for a while and it was difficult because I didn't um, really know what exactly I was looking for. I'll get into that. So I um, was ready to tape it and I found that my I took I took a reading of the resistance again and I found that it was s higher than what I wanted it to be. It was around two it was around two ohms. Um, so that wasn't good. Um, so what I did is I um, desoldered the wires that linked my series uh, connections of traces together. I, so I, I took away the parallel connections by desoldering those wires. And then I, what I found is that this had, I had been moving this around, um, testing it, putting it on the TAS, and then moving it back over here. Sorry if I made you motion sick there, I gotta stop doing that. And I found that uh, when I had been moving it, it had been flexing and buckling in the middle and that that was causing two things to happen. One was that my cold, every once in a while I've had a cold solder joint. Uh, my cold solder joints were breaking open. And the second thing that was happening is the um, copper on the traces was lifting uh, in this area and this area would become removed from the rest of the trace. So there are a few spots where you'll see I've dragged out the trace so that I have um, a solder connection between this half or this side and that side of the break. Um, so that's something to watch out for if you do uh, make your heated bed like this, which I recommend you do because it's so cheap. Um, and you'll learn a lot about troubleshooting electronics connections uh, if you do it. And also, you could learn a little bit about um, network design. Anyway, um, what I done what, after I after I found those breaks, um, I put it back together, and I wrapped it in my cap time tape. And the next step is to find a a good layer between the heater element and the glass um, bed plate because you don't necessarily want the heater element to be in direct contact one moment with the bed plate. So here's my bed plate, and I'll um, show you why. Um, a, uneven heating would cause the glass to break, possibly. And B, there's a gap between the plate and the heater anyway, caused by the leads here from the staples and the copper wires. Oh, and another note, when I wrapped this in tape, I made sure to wrap this section last so that if something does happen and I need to troubleshoot it, I can just lift that uh, last section of tape up. And I wasn't worried about bubbles or anything with this. This is just to uh, prevent heat from escaping out of the bottom and um, isolating this from anything that could short it out on top. Uh, so the next things I have to do is create a a layer between the bed plate and the heater. So that's just going to be um, an old pillowcase which is made of 100% cotton and 
the ignition, auto ignition temperature of 100% cotton is around 700 degrees Fahrenheit. This is how the heated bed thermistor came from Mauser. See it's an Epcos 100K. I got the link to that in my bill of materials. Um, and uh, it's packaged <laughs> in this gigantic, I mean this weighs less than an envelope it feels like, um, but it's gigantic. So this actually, um, my order came in a rather large box. Um, I think it's because of this, because everything else in there was just in the standard Mauser bag. But I, I guess it's fragile, so, you know, handle with care. And there it is. After all the unwrapping, there's a bag, and it just looks like a little sperm. So, that's the thermistor. Okay, so this is the thermistor. Can't see it. Huh, no, it's not in frame. Um, there it is. See, tiny. And here is a thermistor wire which is supplied with the Rambo kit. And here's a little piece of heat shrink which I got from Radio Shack. So this is going to be really simple. Uh, you know, you just got to strip the end of this solder that on and um, before you solder it cut this to length um, I'm gonna be clipping these wires a little bit just because they're you can't even see that can you it's so small I'll be cutting these wires a little bit just because they're a little bit long and I can use less heat shrink if I clip them a bit so I'll clip them a little bit I'll stagger them um, so I'll make one end longer than the other and then uh, I'll slide my pre-cut heat shrink onto the white wire, then solder, and then do my heat shrinking. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to film it because it's annoying to film. So that's what the thermistor looks like. That's about as close as I can get it. I don't have a telephoto lens. Um, fascinating little device. And if you want to learn more about them, there's um, a paper published actually by the manufacturer of this particular um, for Mr. Ep Epcos, is it? EPCOS? And you can find that on the internet at this link physics.queensu.ca. I just Google searched, um, what did I search? I, I searched their Mr. Internal Structure. And I found it, and there's a PTC and an NTC one. So this goes through all the theory behind thermistors. Um, so it's a good read. Okay, I uh, soldered some wires to my heater leads. I put down the insulating layer, that, that woven wool. And then I put down my heater, copper side up. Then my cotton insulation layer. 
which is really more like a heat spreading layer. And I have my thermistor here. So that's in place. And now we're just going to put the mirror tile on. Okay, four corners are on. Everything's in place. This is pretty much securely in there. The mister is. Well, it can wiggle a bit. Oh, well, I guess the wire can wiggle, but the thermistor is in position. I have that plugged into the T0 spot. I don't know if that's right. Uh, I'll have to check that in the firmware. Yeah, it's plugged into T0 right there. So now I just got to plug my second power supply in and I'll be testing it. Okay, I'm in printer, print run, and I am, let's see, what am I doing? I'm testing this bed, so I've got my thermistor plugged into terminal uh, T2 on the Rambo board, so this is our schematic. The thermistors are here and it goes T0, 1, and 2, and I read on a post on the RepRap forums that you're supposed to plug into T2 for the for the bed. So you can see that my B is at 18.2. Cool. And I don't know why I have 500 degrees for my my hot end because it shouldn't be 500 degrees. It should be much lower. It should be zero because I disabled that. But who knows? So I've set my bed for 85 degrees. And I just press set. So now we're going to see if it works. Um, gee, <laughs> I hope it does. Um, got my power supply plugged in. Oh, look at that. Started to climb. Okay, yeah. No, golden. We're working here. Um, I haven't felt any difference yet. But, let's see. It's 532 right now. And I need to plug my charger in. It's 532. I don't get a second hand. Alright, let's see what happens. Um, let's see how long it takes me to go from room temperature. I'm actually at like, I'm at like eight. I was at like 18 degrees when I started. I'm at 26 now. So what did we say? 532 I started. Okay, check it back in in five minutes because I gotta get my charger. Okay, it's 537, and look at that! I'm at 60 degrees just about. So, um, I did like a 30 second count when it was at 45 degrees, and in 30 seconds it got to just under um, 50 degrees. So, I think this climbs at a rate of about 10 degrees Celsius per minute, um, which is great. So, it takes like 6 minutes to heat up to temp. If I'm going from like 20 degrees to 85, under 10 minutes, which is the point. I don't know if it's going to stay at that rate um, once I get to that. I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's linear, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, brute, we shall see. Um, word, word. 540, so it's been eight minutes since I've started it. And what is this? Oh, hello, VLC. Okay, it's been eight minutes, and I'm at 71.3, so let's call it 70. So let's say I went from like, let's just say I went from like 20 to 70 in eight minutes. My one concern, which isn't really a concern, is that this uh, wool 
have some like water in it and it'll just get everything wet okay it's been 10 minutes so I don't know if it, about this performing well business but I didn't preheat okay I seem to have maxed out here at 93.2 um, but I think that's because of uh, voltage losses in my line because of the thickness I don't know the length of these wires for sure maybe I don't know how to check it out I'll have to get a good reading of what I'm getting across the bed but yeah you're I think it's um 93 is gonna be the max here ladies and gentlemen so that's okay and I don't know if it's gonna be visible yeah you can kinda see it out there see there that that's actually water I think it's water doesn't really smell like water but I think it was in this and see I wanted to use I really wanted to use this wool square because I thought it was a good idea at first I had my girlfriend make it you know it was like I wanted to involve her no not really um it's a piece of shit it's a great wool square but it has no place in this project so away with it I'm gonna go to the clip method and try to keep this raised up off the bed this I mean the heater raised up off the bed using clips reattached it using clips and when I clipped it on I folded these four on the bottom so then I then I flipped it over and everything's pretty much on there just the same as it was um, except for the blasted wool layers gone and I can see the gap now something and less heat will dissipate through the aluminum from this point on so I'm gonna give it another go and see what happens bed is currently at 41.7 degrees and it is 609 so let's see where this takes us setting it for 110 and still 609 I want it to be 610 but it's not going to be 610 so it's 609 and that's good too 42 degrees already heating up okay so removing that wool layer I'm at like 103 I started at like 609 so it's been 20 minutes <clears throat> but it started at 40 so and my bed plate's still hot so it's not that hot actually well I broke three digits um, on the low spot form, it cause, calls for Mr. Jibba. It says we should set it for 85, not 110, but that's just because of um, the placement of the thermistor, etc. So, I'm not sure exactly how the thermistor is placed on the stock TAS, but I know that this should pretty much be at 110 for the Mendel heated bed. Let me see what the real value should be. Okay, it's been 35 minutes and I've just been browsing some forms. And I'm up to 108C, uh, so that's great. But um, what I've been reading on some forms is that people have been going anywhere from 80 to 110, so I'll have to figure out what works for me um, if I ever do end up printing ABS. So I suspect that this will work. 
Um, I suspect that 100 degrees C will work on this because it's a glass bed and you really just are worried about first layer adhesion and warping so there are so many other variables that come into play which is what I've read um, so yeah um, I don't really have any data on how long it took me to get here uh, let's see I was at 40 degrees Celsius at 609 when I plugged it in and now it's 645 so it's been like 35 minutes and I'm pretty much at 110, I'm at 108. My bed plate is hot. I'm sorry, my uh, aluminum plate is hot. Um, I don't know the temperature of it, but it's hot. Um, this is hotter, I think. Yeah, it's, it's hotter, uh, which is good. But even with that spacing there. I guess it's making contact with these bolts or maybe just being in the vicinity causes that. Um, so I don't know about this clip method. If I'll keep doing that or what. But for now I have a heated bed that works I know with PLA. So this is a success.